Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Heart Talk. Today is January 29th in the year 2019. I am Sue Ellen Dickinson, and I will be your host uh, for the next hour or so. We've got a lively discussion ahead. I can just feel it coming. Um, But before we do, before we get started, let me remind everybody that Heart Talk is so much more than an ordinary call. And why is that? Well, because this is where you can speak your mind straight from your heart. And that's exactly what we're going to do today, just like we do every Tuesday morning. And Heart Talk is brought to you by The Essentials. Yep, The Essentials. And you may be wondering, well, what are The Essentials? Well, they're an amazing nutritional supplemental product that our very own Dr. Rudy Cartwright has created and manufactured for us, MSers. Um, They are designed, formulated, and created to help get rid of symptoms such as fatigue, the pain, tingling, and numbness, vision problems, help with your balance, and yes, 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 they can be taken with your current medications. How about that? They're also all comprised of all natural ingredients. And uh, you're probably saying, well, okay, sounds great. Where can I find out more and pick myself up a bottle of these essentials? Great question. When we're done with this wonderful call we're about to have, I'm going to be sending you an email. Uh, It'll have, first of all, the replay link, so you can re-listen to this and share it with family and friends if you like. But also scroll down, um, way down, and you will see capital letters, Get Dr. Cartwright's Supplements. And in there, you'll see a link to every one of his products, which are all amazing. Click on the essentials. Um, New page will pop up, tell you all about what ingredients are in there, tell you everything I've just said, and then some about these amazing essentials. Because, listen, guys, they really are helping people to feel better one symptom at a time. And, you know, I've said it before. I'll say it again. I wish I had known about Dr. Cartwright and his products, the the essentials being what I consider the flagship product. Wish I'd known about that years and years ago. Maybe they would have helped me to uh, recover a little quickly. We'll never know the answer to that. But what I can do today is pass that information on to you and show you where you can go and look for yourself. And so go ahead. When you get that email, click on it and on that link. And check out the essentials and pick yourself up a bottle. I know you're going to be glad you did. I know that um, because they really are helping people just like you and me, helping us to feel one, one, one symptom, one less symptom at a time. There we go. Tongue tied this morning. Gee, could it be the cold weather? <laughs> imagine, My, imagine that. I also want to say, well, before, yeah. Sorry, so I was just going to say my product came yesterday. So this morning is the first day I took them. Wonderful, wonderful. I'll mark that down. Thank you, Heather. I'm glad. I'm glad you told me that. Thanks. Okay. Um, I also wanted to say, guys, um, take a visit to my my website, which is nomorems.com. And um, I am the author of three books. They are there for you to have a look and check out uh, the first one. The one that I wrote was No More MS, My Journey Back to Life. And that's my story. There it is, basically my life story right there. You've got that and then an amazing cookbook I wrote with some fabulous recipes going back to mom and grandma, um, the days that when I was growing up on the farm and uh, some of these amazing healthy recipes. It's called Flavors of Home. That's the other one. And then um, the most recent book that I've written is called Looking at Life from the Other Side. And this is a compilation of some truly amazing Basically, short stories. They're all they're all true. Um, and uh, rather than go into a long dissertation on that, I'll just ask the question: Do you believe there are coincidences in life? I mean, real coincidences in life. Well, if that raises your curiosity, Come on in. you've got to check out this book, "Looking at Life from the Other Side," because it's just amazing. It's kind of like we we say, you know, when we're talking here on Heart Talk, when one door closes, another one opens. And it's just amazing the things that God can put in our path, you know, um, when trouble might strike, you know, how he does to help relieve the situation for us. It's just, it's just amazing. And more and more and more. And there, 
you know, stories that'll make you laugh, make you cry. Um, but they're they're all true. They're all true. Every one of them. So there you go. My website, nomorems.com. Please check it out. I know you're going to be good. You're glad you did. And sign up as a subscriber. Scroll down there a little bit and uh, fill in your name and your email, and that way you will get included into my database and you'll get on my mailing list so I can send you all this great information. Uh, right off the bat, I'll send you some free reports. Um, you'll see it there when you go in, um, some great free reports that you're going to get just for signing up. And then, of course, you're going to get notified when we have Heart Talk. You're going to get the replays. So if you haven't done it by now, Sign up as a subscriber. I'd love to have you. I'd love to be in touch with you like that. And not only that, a little surprise, um, I have a brand new website, and there's going to be more coming out in an email on this. We're putting the finishing touches on it right now, but you can go there and check it out. And there's a whole different story about me connected with this. Um, and it's uh, just to, to give it to you, kind of give it away is what it's about, but the website is sueellenart.com. That's my name, sueellenart, A-R-T, dot com. So it's S-U-E-E-L-L-E-N-A-R-T dot com. Yeah, because um, it's all about me um, and um, my art, which I do, but go check it out. Um, I hope you like it. I'd love some feedback on that. And like I said, I've got to make a kind of a formal little email, like, please go check out my new website, sueellenart.com. So I'm going to be sending that out to everybody, um, but we're not quite there yet. Um, like I said, we're tweaking it, but check it out. I'd love to know what you think and think of my work. And like I said, there's a whole story that goes with that, and I'll tell you in the email, and uh, maybe we'll you know, talk about it in a heart talk a little bit, because it's all about not giving up, okay? We talk about that all the time, not giving up on your goals, on your dreams. And this is one of mine that, uh, well, even, at, even in this late hour, you know, God has granted me. So I want to share it with you, and I really would love you to check it out, SueEllenArt.com. Okay, enough about me. I want to talk about you. And I want to talk about this great email that I sent out um, yesterday, I think, or the day before, um, because it really goes to what I was just talking about, about not giving up, about having a positive attitude. And by the way, um, I know, let me just put this as a little adjunct here, I know that Pretty much everybody that I know is on the call right now is going through um, the weather from H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> Pardon my French. It's bad. So if you want to talk about that, that's okay, too, because I really do want to hear what's happening in your neck of the woods. Because you know what? Hi, everybody. It's Hi, happening this here, is too. Hi, Mary. Mary, and how are you? <laughs> Hi, I'm good. How are you all doing? Good. We're doing great. But anyway, oh, okay. I want to I wanna get down into this, into the meat and potatoes, so to speak, of this. We'll start here. And then you guys, you know, because this, this is your call. Uh, take it wherever you want to go. But okay, let's I, start here. I said, the, I was, I'm sorry. Okay. I said I, I was glad when we were coming back on an, for another Tuesday. You know, I said it takes so long. I forgot about you all this morning. I had so many doctor appointments, to, I mean, calls to make, but I'm here now. So Good. I'm, I'm glad you it's, are. Well, thank you. Here, here is seven degrees right now. Oh my gosh! And then, yeah, and then they said that by Thursday it's supposed to get to fifty-five. Like, wow. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Well, let's get to the weather in 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 a minute because I want I want to hear from all you guys. Jeepers. And by the way, for those that don't know, Marion, who was just talking, she's in Indiana. So we've got this. For those of you in the rest of the world, uh, might be listening even live, but more likely on the replay. Uh, and by the way, we want to welcome all of you as well. But here in the U.S., we've got about 75% of the nation right now under this, uh, oh, my gosh, it's just terrible, terrible, bitter, bitter, bitter cold. But we'll get to that because there's stuff I want to share with you too on that. But let's begin with this um, because, you know what, I, I have said this a million times, and now here comes Diane Scott, who is another great writer out there, and she's saying the same thing that I've been saying a million times. Uh, she's saying the same thing in this great article that, article that she wrote, which is called The Choice is Mine and Yours. I'm going to read it to you because um, 
some of you got it, some of the emails, some of you didn't get it. Um, maybe you read it, maybe you haven't had the chance, but it's well worth that just to kind of refresh our memory and, and see where we want to take this. Because, you see, guys, Diane gets it. She really understands that attitude is everything, whether you're one of the normal people experiencing ups and downs in life or maybe you're somebody who's suffering from this dreadful monster disease that we hate but we love to talk about. And, of course, we're talking about MS. And this is the part I really like. Diane also subtly reflects wisdom and meaning from my favorite quote by Dr. Wayne Dyer who says, and I quote, when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, read this um, article to you. Let me get a sip of my juice. Hold on. Okay, and while she's getting her juice, I want to say I wasn't trying to start. My phone ringing. Let me, okay. Um, Yeah, if if you guys are talking, could you please hit your mute button? Okay, Okay. thank you very much. Okay, Mm -hmm. so here is Diane Scott with her great article, and she begins with this. Quote, you and me not going to wake up every morning and get what we want, end quote. I heard that notable line in a movie once, so I, I can't remember which movie it was. That one astute line still resonates with me. It's incredibly factual most accurate and undoubtedly applicable in an array of situations that anyone can experience in a lifetime. There will be those wondrous days, whether fun-filled or just comfortably content or uneventful, that we awaken to and, well, all is well until bidding good night. However, there are those mornings we arise and must face the ongoing or onset of various unfortunate happenstances or adversities. For example, a troubled relationship, a child in some sort of crisis, loss of a loved one, financial woes, vehicular problems, poor health, involuntary job loss, and world calamities are only several examples of waking up to something we don't want to encounter. Naturally, what anyone would want to awaken to every day are good days and good times. But that's not particularly realistic. So a choice is necessary. Succumb to the trials we are faced with or seek ways to manage and cope, to live a fulfilling life in spite of it. Well, I awakened on July 13th in the year 2007 to receive a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. And over the years, and especially presently, I awakened to the daily challenges of living with a chronic degenerative disease, definitely unwanted. I learned early on it was necessary to make a choice because there was now a whole new monster of an element to awaken to which didn't replace any other trials but instead added to them and it wasn't, it wasn't going anywhere. Admit, admittedly, it's a lot. The burning pain, extremely limited, fine and gross motor skills, unpredictability, loss of independence, the creepy crawlies, seizures, fatigue, the pro- progression of it, etc., all attributed to MS, and it really is enough to drive one to despair. But my, my choice was not to dis- succumb to despondency. If I wanted to live my best in spite of my circumstances, I was cognizant that if I didn't focus on optimism, I would succumb to uncertainty and fear. If I didn't focus on positivity, I'd easily succumb to depression. If I didn't practice staying in a game, I'd more than likely succumb to a life of reclusion. If I didn't want to live life, I'd surely succumb to misery. You and me not going to wake up every morning and get what we want. But some days are better than others. I think it has a lot to do with my choices. Mentally, a positive outlook can help through much of the battles in our lives, specifically mine with MS. To be morose every day only compounds to already unfavorable circumstances. 
I encourage making the choice to try hard to find a silver lining, to not succumb to unpleasant trees along our way, but instead to learn and live past them. To overcome, not succumb, is a choice we all make. And there you have it. Mm-hmm. Diane Scott. Wow. She nails it, doesn't she? Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Is that Virginia? <laughs> I didn't even say anything. How did you, you didn't know have to. I heard, I heard you're all too familiar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I instantly knew it was you. <laughs> Hi. Um, good morning. Good morning. Um, what was I even thinking about now? Um, I think that sometimes it feels incredibly difficult to be positive when you're down so low that you feel like you can't get up. You know what I mean? Mentally, when you're, you're feeling like that. Yeah. And... Um, I think that there are ways that I have been able to get past feeling really low. And um, I don't know where I'm going with this. No, you're, you're doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> How do you? I, listen, I think we all, everybody listening to this, whether we're live or everybody's mm-hmm. listening on the replay, and once again, we welcome my replay listeners with open arms. But I think every one of us, Mm-hmm. has been there to one degree or another. Yeah. How do you handle it? I, I'm, I'm really curious. Well, I think sometimes you have to just wallow in your low for a little while, you know, mm-hmm. and just feel it. Like identify and, with it or something? Yeah, just feel it and and just feel bad for yourself. I'm not saying do this on a constant basis. I'm saying right. sometimes just feel it and then you have to move on from it. And I think, well, you know, my way of, of dealing with things, I go to a quiet place and I lay down and I, I think, and I, I, um, I think about more positive things and how I, you know, the good things that are in my life and how much I appreciate those, my family, my husband, um, and if I concentrate on the positive things in my life, then I don't think so much about the negative feelings that I have about how I'm feeling. Amen. Is that, Amen. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but what I do is I'll get me a sheet of paper and an ink pen or a pencil or something, and I write down the positives that I'm dealing with versus the negatives, and the positives always outweigh the negatives for me. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and I pray about it. I can't leave but, God out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a wonderful way to deal with it. Just Thank put you. them down in two columns, right? Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Some positives up there. Then you think about, you know, even though I'm going through this right now, I got that. I'm got, you know, this outweighs the negatives. So that's the way I handle it, and I pray about it. Mm-hmm. And it always works like a charm for me. And it's not that I always feel the best that I'm feeling, but I outweigh the goods versus the bad. Mm-hmm. So that's how. That's well how I do said. It. Well said. Thank yeah. you. So you guys kind of sift through it like it's a. A sifting or sorting process is what I'm getting from both you guys. Is mm-hmm. that right? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. I think well, you I have, have to, in, to in those it. times when you're feeling really down, you have to, it's very hard to look for the good. And it's very important to see the, the good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I think you know, by making your list that you do see the good. And right. that maybe the good outweighs the bad sometimes. Maybe sometimes mm-hmm. it doesn't. But I think um, trying to be positive and having a happy outlook most days is um, a healthy thing. Right. Even, even if you, you're feeling really bad, you can still, 
he can still feel better. N- exactly. Not physically, but mentally. I yeah, think mentally, that, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I kind of like that way you take ink pen or whatever and write down on paper and mm-hmm. negative on one side, positive on the other side, and easy. And, like you said, the positive always outweighs the negative by quite a bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's a good way to do it, too. Mm-hmm. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's really good. Now, you said something very interesting, Virginia. I'd like everybody's take on this as to how you guys deal with it because, you know, we all go about things a little bit different. Sometimes we're the same, but, you know, we're all a little different in our, our way and our style. But you said you kind of mellow with it. How, how did how, I forgot the word you used, but basically um, the, the way I interpreted it um, because I could identify with, with – how you were defining the funk, right? The is funk. That you, you kind of stare it in the face, you know, mm-hmm. and say, I see you, you know, <laughs> I see you, what are you doing? Let's sit down here and talk about it, you know, that, yeah. that kind of a thing. <laughs> you know, what are you doing around here, you know, and, and either, you know, and, and I think, I think, if I, I don't know if you guys are the same thing. Um, sometimes in my case, you know, I, you know, you can be really sad or you can even really get kind of PO'd with yourself, you know, mm-hmm. like, why am I doing this? Because I have so much else to mm-hmm. be grateful for, because I have so much else to be thankful for, and there is this litany of positive stuff going on mm-hmm. in my life or around me, and what in the world, what in the Sam Hill am I doing here, Just feeling sorry for myself and getting all down in the dumps. You relate to that? Mm-hmm. Did you just say what in the Sam Hill? Yeah, I did. Oh, <laughs> my mother used to say that. Oh, oh, it wow. just hit me in the heart. <laughs> oh, well, in a good way, I hope. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, in a good way. Oh, well, I'll be sure and say it again before the call's over. <laughs> I thought she was the only one that said that word. But oh, no. <laughs> no, there's others. Apparently not. What? The Sam Hill, are you doing that for? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there's there, there's a way of identifying it. It, is, it, it. I mean, I like to look at stuff and identify it. What, whatever it is, yeah. and the, the murkier it is, the more I'm going to sit there and <laughs> tear it apart and analyze it until I really get it figured out. Are you guys the same way? I am. You yeah. know, go to the quiet. Right. Are you there? I am here. Oh, heck yeah. Think. <laughs> you know, think about everything and put it into perspective. That's where I go. I go to bed. <laughs> Yeah. I lay on my bed and go to the quiet. Yeah. Yeah, go into the silence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's going in. Yeah, and, and you know, for those of you who might be hearing this for the first time or you don't know what we're talking about, um, we, and we talk about this a lot on Heart Talk, because when life get, really gets wound up, and it does, Oh, yeah. Whether it winds up in confusion or chaos or depression, it, you know, it, 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 it doesn't matter. When things are out of control to one way or another, this is when we need to get control and, like Virginia's saying, put things into perspective. Mm-hmm. Now, I, she calls it going into the quiet. I call it going into the silence. It's all the same thing mm-hmm. because what you do, no matter how busy you are, and we're all guilty of the same thing. In other words, when things are really just hectic and out of control, I don't have time to do that. I've got, I can't quiet down now. I can't settle down. I've got this and that and that. I've got something on the stove. Oh, my gosh. The alarm bells are going off all around us. And no, because that is when we stop. Yeah. That is the moment. That's that's your trigger. You that's know. your trigger. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> Pay and attention. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you go, what in the Sam Hill is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's my trigger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed yeah. to do that now. But yeah. seriously, you, yeah, that, that is when you drop everything. Mm-hmm. Isn't that right, Virginia? You, you yeah. Just, oh. it's about, at that point, it's Walk all away. about you. Right. And going to the right. quiet or going to whatever we call it, I lay down on the bed and just yep, yep. think it out. Right. Yeah. And, and think it, about the, the positive things in my life. Yeah. But, you, you go, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, go, go, go. I think about the positive things in my life and what I'm grateful for. 
I'm so grateful for the wonderful husband I have, the wonderful son that I have, my friends. You know, there's, there's so many positives in your life at that point. I think at any point that you can say, oh, I've got all these wonderful people around me, and I've, um, I just... I, I, but on an, another way, I mean, if you're really concerned about your health and, and what's happening, then you need to go to see your doctor, obviously, and find out what's, what he can do. Right. But um, I think when you're just all riled up, you really need to just go to the quiet and lay there and think. Right. And, you know, I, you know, I find this to be true. See if you agree. Um, when you go into the quiet or into the silence, the call. When and by the way, this is guys. This is when we do nothing else. Virginia lays down, or sitting in a chair. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the whole idea is to be by yourself, and it doesn't matter if you know your the sun pouring in the window on your face, or if it's a dark room and a gloomy day kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. It doesn't doesn't matter. What matters is that we go into this silence we go into the quiet and i i have found sometimes when you first start to encounter that you know experience that you know and your your mind can be racing around right in in mm-hmm. a million different directions and it's like but you know if you just remain there for 20 or 30 minutes and here's where and i i, I this is sort of um can't think of another word but this is where the magic takes place and it's, yeah. it's far deeper meaning than that but for lack of a better word right now on a on a gloomy gust day where you know we're all freezing our toes off to put it mildly around here i can think of but um your mind is just racing but to be quiet for that 20 or 30 minutes don't do anything don't fidget with a pen or a pencil don't straighten pictures on the wall don't flip through magazines or a book do nothing Mm -hmm. and close your close your eyes very important and allow your brain literally allow your thoughts to calm down you're focusing on your objective which is to be quiet and to sort things out so that you're rebalanced and look at it that way you're rebalancing you know Mm -hmm. your your mind your emotions whatever the case may be and particularly if there's something that's bothering you, um, it may be a problem or a big question, unanswered question, whatever the case may be. You know, um, that, believe me, believe me, if you do that for 20 or 30 minutes, the answer will come. I know. Won't it's it? like magic. Isn't it, though? Virginia. It's like, mm-hmm. amazing. Virginia, my mom had a friend many years ago who was dying of cancer. Mm-hmm. I think this was maybe back in the 70s. Yeah. But she was dying from cancer, and she wrote a poem, and it starts out, I needed the quiet, so he drew me aside. And that's just what you're talking about. Mm. Yeah. 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 You, need, right. you need the quiet, so, you know, he, 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 God draws us aside, and in that quiet, he gives what we need. Yeah. Yes, he does. And I think that there's so many people that, don't allow them, allow themselves uh, the quiet, you know, to get away, that they're so frazzled all day and they're at home and they're, you know, they worked all day and they're making supper and they're trying to clean up and they got to do laundry. And it's just like in the middle of it all, you have to say enough. Stop. Yeah. Enough stop. <laughs> I, enough I, is enough. I need to ex- call that having, having some me time. No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Call it whatever you like to, but it's it's so so important. Well, it truly it is, is the basic of basics spiritual mm-hmm. experience. Would would you agree with that, Virginia? Or anybody? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anybody? It, it it because yes. it's it's it becomes the connection. It becomes the connection between ourselves and by ourselves self meaning spirit our Mm -hmm. spirit connecting to well some people will 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 begin by calling it a higher power but it it, that higher power actually is god and Mm -hmm. um you know but it does connect you to 
really another realm, an angelic realm, a spiritual realm. You know, and we're throwing all these definitive words out there, but we're all talking about the same thing, no matter what label or name or definition you put on it, because mm-hmm. it is a changing experience. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. And I have found that nine times out of ten, I come away feeling much better. I've worked it out in my head, and I feel calm. Yeah. And I can just get up and get on with my day. And it's a strengthening process, mm-hmm. too, isn't it? It's, mm-hmm. it's, remark- it's actually remarkable because it, it, it is a transition. You, mm-hmm. you take yourself from a state of chaos, whether it's out-of-control chaos or organized chaos, it's still chaos. And um, whether it's happening around you in your physical realm, which creates that mental-slash-emotional state that you you, you, you enter. But either way, everything is off balance. Everything is off center. We have to admit that. Mm -hmm. And so we take ourselves... Our body, body, mind, and spirit, right? We take it and we lay it on the bed or sit it in the chair. Either way, it doesn't matter wherever we're comfortable, and we simply do nothing. We clear our minds as much as we can and allow that process, and it's a process, to take place. Mm-hmm. And over the period of, really, 20, 30 minutes is all. But you do that and you listen to what Virginia is saying because she, she nailed it. And it is a transition process, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I, I, for me, it's very important. It's very important in my life to try and just fig- figure things out and to be able to walk, o- get up and walk away and feel like, geez, I feel a whole lot better because now I know what to do mm-hmm. about this situation or that situation. The answer comes, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to or, go and talk to my husband right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I make him sit and listen. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's usually available to talk. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm going to um, cut in now. What's yeah. that? I'm going to cut in now. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, Dr. Cartwright? Well, I hope Virginia is still here. I'm here. Oh, I'm so glad to hear the sound of your voice. Please, sir, you have the floor, well, been, and then I've I have been something in the to tell background you. Background for a while, just listening to you guys. Okay. And Virginia hit the nail on the head. Yep, she sure did. Difficult. Thank you. <laughs> if yeah. it's not difficult, you're not getting there. It has to be difficult first and foremost, mm-hmm. and then you handle the difficulties. That's the jelly of it all. When you, when you face the difficulties, that's where you go and work at it where it's no longer difficult, and then you find another difficulty. That's the way the human body is constructed. Virginia, you're right on the money. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And this is a great talk, Cyril, and I'm telling you. Thank you. Yeah. If it is not difficult, you are not getting better. Right. Yep. You have and to try. If you face difficulty, you get better, and you mm-hmm. continue to face the difficulty, and you will continue to get better. And, you know, Dr. Cartwright, here on Heart Talk, we always um, are saying, you know, the connection between body, mind, and spirit, that's it. That's, and that's what we constantly need to strive for. And we talk about that a lot and these struggles about how we handle things in daily life. And, hey, we all know people who just curl up in a ball in a corner and say, well, I'm just over here crying and feeling sorry for myself. And there's They're nothing not I can do about it. That's right. Exactly. Right? Like yeah. We must, we must mm-hmm. strive in each in our own way. Yeah. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Body, mind, and spirit. Yeah. There That's is a right. connection between the body and the mind, which and the mind is located where? In the brain. Right. 
Mm-hmm. There's a connection there. We're, while we're talking, not, not to interrupt you, but this is right on point. If, I, don't, I don't know at what point you came in, but Virginia was saying, and, and I went to go back to it, now is a good time to go back to it. When she is complete with her going into the, into the quiet, into her silence, and she feels the resolve coming over her, she actually feels that wave of strength. Many of us can, can relate, Virginia. A wave of strength, a wave of resolve, but not only that. Here's the key. She says she feels better. Now, that tells me there is a physical transformation. And again, we're talking about actually elevating ourselves to another plane, if you will, during this process. It's a process. And I'm not trying to get all metaphysical on you here, but it's actually true because there are so many mysteries in this life we don't understand. And we're not trying to understand them here either. But the bottom line is you do feel better. You physically can, maybe not every time, Mm -hmm. but you physically can feel better. And, Virginia, you said that. Would would you like to expound on that? And maybe Dr. Cartwright can jump in after, after that. That's all right. Well, yeah, I think that, that when I go into the what, what I call the quiet right. is because there's things that I need to I need to think and I need to resolve something in my head that has been um, just going at me all day and I just haven't had time to do it. I just go and lay down and and I just get really quiet and the answers do come to you. If they come I want to, to me. I, not not to interrupt you, but I'd like you to take us to any physical improvement slash changes slash differences. How you feel physically? Yeah, I feel pretty fun, uh, spunky after. <laughs> I do. I do. I feel really good. It's almost like it's a release. You know, you've figured out what it is that you need to do. And um, away you go. And it feels good. Your body. Yeah. When you laid down, you said everything was in chaos around you, indeed. Right. So you're, 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 you've planted yourself in your quiet. hmm Is there a physical, is anything altered physically with you during that let me, let me cut in here. Yes, please. There is a physical change that occurs. Okay. Tell us about it. Okay. This human body of ours is one giant chemical plant. You eat food, grapes, oranges, other vegetables, meat, whatever. It is that food is digested and gets into the body. And that chemical process of digestion, once it gets into the bloodstream, that food is turned into skin, chemical reaction, hair, chemical reaction, heart tissue, chemical reaction, brain tissue, chemical reaction. Everything is based on the chemistry. Wow. And the conductor of this chemistry is the DNA. And you are feeding that DNA to do things properly. Once the brain starts to do what it normally does, And that is, it starts to learn and remember. It changes its metabolism, which is learning and and remembering. Mm -hmm. It changes the metabolism of the heart, learning and memory. The metabolism of the muscles, learning and memory. So you have all of these things going on that really changes the body. Wow. 
And you can do that when you think about what you are doing, how well you can walk or talk, and obviously eating properly and getting the appropriate amount of sleep. These changes occur when the brain is functioning properly. These are physical changes. And that's why we change when something happens externally, i.e. in the atmosphere, it gets cold, and what does your body do? I've got to hang on to this heat, mm-hmm. and it will do that. But th- these external changes that occur around us impacts upon the internal changes, changes rather, and these are physical, and all of it is based on chemistry. And so these physical changes, i.e. feeling better, my balance is better, (laughs) my eyesight is better, my strength is better. All of these things are physical changes. And as long as they are difficult, you'll continue to get better and better, and better. This is amazing, because Mm -hmm. this is exactly, Mm -hmm. I think, what all of us needed, wanted, and needed to hear. And this is where I was going with Virginia um, and and everybody else, because I've experienced it. Well, heck, even though I am symptom-free right now, we all have bad days. You know, heck, I'm no exception. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, chaos happens. Mm-hmm. Stuff happens. And so, you know, when, whenever I go into the silence and practice, which I don't think any of us do as often as we should, tell you the truth. But anyway, when, I do, when that happens, it is like magic because I feel better not only mentally and, and my, my mind is clearer and spirit feels better, but my body feels better. You know, it's, it's an energy thing um, for me these days now. It's an energy. It's a clarity. And that makes perfect sense because it is, I mean, you have defined in scientific terms, I think, partial connection between the body, mind, and spirit, which we're always harping on here on the heart dog. But it makes absolute perfect sense mm-hmm. that we can bring that um, make that, uh, it's a metamorphosis into our physical reality and actually actually create a better condition in the physical realm. Wow. I had no idea that this is where this conversation would go to. Me neither, isn't it great? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Dr. Cartwright was on, but we have a mystery caller. I love it when this happens. I just love it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I agree. They put the cherry on top. Going on. <laughs> Wait a minute, was that you, Toretta? Yes, I I agree with what Dr. Rudy Carwright is saying because I think that's what's going on with me. Okay. I've had so many difficult issues going on, and I, you know, the things in my body, it's been so difficult to do this, do that. I got this going on, I got that going on, right. but I just don't feel like it's MS that's causing me all the issues it's other things and for some odd reason it's crazy as ever but what he's saying is true because with your body mind and spirit put together I don't have as much pain as I was having my pain has been relieved you know prayers have been passed on to me the medications and so forth or another I'm trying to get off of those medications that the doctors have put me on in the past because I'm feeling like why do I need to take pain medication if the pain medication wasn't really doing anything for me in the beginning? So it seems like now that I've backed away from the pain medication, my body's feeling better. And that's kind of crazy to say, but everything is working hand in hand together. And that extra chemical that was, I was putting into my body, I guess it's actually going away. So now I'm not feeling the pain that I had been feeling all these years and all those days throughout the day, you know, I'm going on with pain 24-7. 
my pain has been so, I mean, it's been so much better. And this has been going on for quite some time now. So I think sometimes your body has to rid some of the things that may be good for you or from somebody else's perspective. And your chemical plan is always different from somebody else's. So mm-hmm. mine wouldn't process the medication to make me feel better. It was processing the medication, and it would seem like it was doing more damage than good. All right, let me, let's hit the pause button right there because you bring up some incredibly excellent points. And, um, but I want to go back to something we haven't discussed for a long time, just very briefly to recap, because this fits right into the picture of everything we're talking about. Um, guys, l- look at We all come into this world the same way, right? Nobody's going to argue with that. There's one way and one way only. <laughs> By golly, it's a one-way street. That's it. We come in with, we are with, a, with a round ticket, but we, got, we get here all the same one way. And when we come in to this world, and, we, you know, we don't know the mysteries that happen, you know, in the very beginning when the sperm meets the eggs and says, hi there, you know, and the rest is history, and you come in, you know, and, and live your life. But as you grow in the womb, and once you are literally delivered into this life, you are delivered with every tool that you're going to need from that spiritual realm where we came from, wherever that is. But you are given all, we are given all the tools, every tool that our bodies are going to need to succeed in one way or another in this physical world. Now, having said that, yeah, we know what I always love to say. We live in, you know, we all live in a physical world. Therefore, we are all subject to and sometimes rendered under the laws of physics, just the way it is. And we have to deal with it. So what you're saying, Toretta, and what you're saying, Virginia, what you're saying, Marion, and everybody else is thinking, I know, is that stuff happens and our bodies um, will react. Mm-hmm. Well, we have to react back. We have to remember that we, we came into this world with ev- we were given everything, as Dr. Cartwright was saying, it all boils down I, to the, the, the science of it the biology and the science of it. And your body has the ability um, to heal itself. We are given this from the very first breath we take when we come into this world. We've got everything we need, but we need to use it wisely. And we need to sometimes learn because we forget. And Mm -hmm. the things that man has made, oh, yeah, some of it's really good. Yeah, it's very good. Some of it's very powerful. And some of it is needed. Absolutely. Absolutely. Never take that away from the great achievements of mankind in this life. But it's not the beginning and it's not the end. The be-all, end-all, I think, and Dr. Cartwright, I'd love your thoughts on this, is that the human body has the ability to heal itself, but we cannot, for one iota, forget it is the combination of body, mind, and spirit. We're a package deal, guys. That's the way it goes. Oh, yeah. Dr. Cartwright. Mm -hmm. Sue Ellen, obviously you're correct. We are given the tools to heal ourselves, but sometimes we need a little help. Mm-hmm. And I must uh, plug this book of mine that's out there on uh, Amazon, you know, dot com. Mm-hmm. It's called Memory Improving Reading Book. Ooh. It works. Mm-hmm. Is that right, Toretta? Yes. It works. It's a tool. It's a tool, it's tough, but once you get the hang of it, it gets easier and easier. Yes, it does. Actually, it does, yes. It gets easier and easier. It's still tough, but you are doing what? Improving your learning and memory. That is the basis of all that we do. For example... When a child is born, it can do a few things. It can feed, i.e., suck. It can open his eyes. It makes a few noises and cries. And it pee-pees and potties and goes mm-hmm. back to sleep. Pretty soon, over time, it's the nervous system starts to mature. But along with the nervous system maturing, you have these other organs that has to mature also. 
this brain of ours is the conductor of this symphony, so to speak. And these symphonic pieces are the heart, the lungs, the eyes, the kidneys, the muscles, the bones. And the conductor is the brain. But it has to learn and remember. And over time, the child starts to open his eyes, starts to reach for things, starts to smile, makes my mother feel really great. Mm -hmm. And then pretty soon, you put it on the floor, it will try to crawl, and it never gives up. It's tough. But over mm -hmm. time, there's this learning and memory going on, and pretty soon it star, it's really crawling. And the next thing you know, it says, I want to stand up and walk. But that doesn't happen overnight either. So it stands up, falls back down, it doesn't give up. <laughs> yeah. It stands up again, falls back down, stands up, again, uh, stands up again, falls back down, and pretty soon it's able to stand up. Learning and memory has occurred. Yeah. And then it starts to try and walk. <laughs> that doesn't work immediately either. <laughs> so it has to learn and remember to walk, and it does. And then pretty soon it starts to run. Yeah. And the big deal is skipping. <laughs> These are learning and memory occurring, but it takes time. Okay, so Dr. Cartwright, all... we only have five minutes left. Okay, Give you five I'm minute gonna, warning. I'm wrap up right now. So, all of these things are difficult, but it doesn't quit. That child keeps at it. And the next thing you know is reading and writing and doing arithmetic, going to school, riding a bicycle, riding a tricycle, you name it. But the important thing is, if it's not tough, as Virginia said, if it's not difficult, it won't happen. And I would encourage you to check out Memory Improving Reading Book. Go to Amazon.com and type in Memory Improving Reading Book. Tell me what you think or tell Sue Ellen what you think. Matter of fact, once you get it, let Sue Ellen know that you have it so that you, you all can talk about it. And uh, um, you'll get better. Wow. All right, Phil, back to you. All right. Thanks, Dr. Cartwright, so much, and for all that great information. Mm -hmm. Wow. What an amazing yeah, conversation you. this has been today. Wow. Yeah. Now, we are going to have to um, leave. We, we've got about two minutes left um, in our commentary and editorial portion of the call here, and then we're going to move on into the, the prayer portion. But before we do, any comments, you guys? Any thoughts? Uh, anything you yes. want to bring up in the remaining minutes? Go ahead. Yes, I'm going to say this real quick. I'm going to listen to this when you put it back out there. I'm going to listen to the whole entire conversation because I got some good, good information. Yeah, it has been amazing. We're talking about the medicines that you know you don't think is helping you. I mean, I know my doctor thinks that this is helping me, but I was like, it's going to cause the trembling, and I was like, no. Nah. So I wean myself off of some of it. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to. Well, you know your stuff. body. Uh, you know we we all do that, and you know I'm not here to advise or you know suggest right. or anything of that nature. But I will say, you know, we all know how we feel as individuals. Mm -hmm. So if you're strong in, in that direction, stick to your guns, girl. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's yeah, I'm what you've got to understand. To tell us that. Go ahead. I know you're not to give us any medical advice or anything no, no, like that. I'm not saying. We're, 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 just, we're just saying. We're just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What everybody got to understand is everybody's body's not alike. So if your body can't handle doing certain things, don't try to do it. That's the one thing right. that I would give advice to. If your body is not used to doing something, don't try to do it just because I do it or somebody else do it because we're all different. You know, I could do it for so long and it may not affect me. You might do it for a day or two and it really affects you. So please, by all means, don't take the advice of us. Seek your advice from your health professional because they're the ones that went to school, read the books, and know what, what is supposed to be done. 
So mm-hmm. it's just up to you how you want to handle with your body, and that's what I've chose to do because I've been on so many different medications pain-wise, and it has not helped me whatsoever. You know, in the beginning, one did. My body, I think, got immune to it. It just kept getting increased, increased, and it was like, now you're turning me into taking all these different pills. I mean, ladies, gentlemen, I have been on 42-plus pills in a day. That's too much medication going through my little system, I feel, so I'm going to refrain from that and do what I feel is best for me. And not everybody can go that route, but I have and I take what I feel is needed, such as my supplements and, you know, things like that to help me out. And so far it's been a blessing, and that's what's got me to where I'm at because I was in bad condition at one point in time in my life. And right. now and I'm right. improving. I hate to say it, honey. We we got we've got to leave it there. We're we're, we're out right. of time. I'm sorry. We, Not we, a problem. We've got to leave it there. Um, before I let you go, um, if Dr. Cartwright is still on the call, I want to relay what you said. Um, Toretta oh, yeah. was on the call Friday with you. There was some technical difficulty on the phone. She could hear you and all of you guys fine. You could not hear what she was saying, so I don't think you knew she was on the call. She was there. I don't know quite how to resolve this issue. Maybe, Tourette, I'll give you a call, or you know, we can fig- we'll figure something out. But um, uh, I just want Dr. Cartwright to be aware that you were on the call, okay? So, oh, thank you. Yeah, okay. All right, now I'm going to um, have to leave it there. Whoops, hang on. My phone's about to die. Let me grab this other one. Mm-hmm. Okay, are you, are you all there? Yep. I'm still here. Yep. Okay, great. great. Make sure. I wasn't sure I was, but <laughs> there we are. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. We are now going to move into the prayer portion of our call. And uh, for those who may be listening for the first time or just unfamiliar, um, you have heard an amazing conversation. And, you know, we have an am- amazing conversations every week among us because, you know, we're, we're family. This is an MS family. It's who we are. And this is what we do. And we talk about these subjects that nobody else wants to talk about or can talk about, but we do. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to continue to do that. But having, having said that, you know, t- t- this Heart Talk um, is just sort of an amazing platform uh, and format for all of us. And what we do at the end of every Heart Talk call is we, we close with a prayer. And we close with a prayer to say thank you to Jesus Christ for bringing us together, for allowing this to happen. Because I'm telling you guys, um, just to have, take my word on this one, um, it would not happen without the help of Jesus and setting this Amen. thing up and bringing it into fruition and keeping us going. We're in our third year, aren't we? I mean, there's, <laughs> it's just amazing. And I'm loving every minute of it, and I hope you are too. So we always uh, close with a prayer, and I will read the names on the prayer list. Um, But before we uh, begin, are there any new names to go on the prayer list this week? Yes. This is Sherry. I have one. I can't believe I forgot it last week. The family of Jamie Claus. Wait, Jay, uh, spell the last name. It's Jamie C L O S S, I believe it is. Okay. She's a thirteen year old girl that was kept captive for eighty something days. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And yeah. Oh yes, yes. That's I heard been about on the that. news and everything. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's that in your was neck just of the five wood. or six hours from here. How many? Yes. Five or six hours oh from my. here. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So, I mean it's, it's a changing world, guys. And um we okay, Jamie Kloss family is on the list. Anybody else? Yes, uh, Shani. Shani uh, had a stroke on both sides of his body and then a, blank, a brain, um, blood clot on the brain. Oh, God. He's doing better. Thank God. Thank God he's doing better. So just He's doing better, down. Sonny. All right, Sonny's on the prayer list. Any, Shani, anybody Shani, else? Shani. No, not Sonny. Shani. Oh, I'm sorry. Better, better spell it for okay. me. S-H-A-N-N-Y. Shani. Okay, so Shawnee. Sha- okay, got it. Yes. Okay, wonderful. All right, anybody else? We've got um, the Jamie Kloss and family and Shawnee. Anyone else on the prayer list this week? Okay. All right, then what we will do is um, let me take a sip of my juice. Ah, uh, all oh, that vitamin C. It's got to help you. <laughs> And by the way, prayers are going out to everybody. Um, 
over about 75% of this nation because we are in a super deep freeze and um, oh, very yeah. dangerous temperatures out there. So everybody, be safe today. Just be, be, be safe, please. Be cautious and safe, and I know you are. All right, we will now enter the prayer portion of our call, and let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your divine intervention into the lives of so many that need your help. We ask that you answer our fervent prayers to help those who are in need and afflicted with multiple sclerosis and other ailments and diseases that are interfering with their lives and in many cases crippling their lives. And as we read these names aloud now, Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit move through these lines of communication that are connecting us all around the world and that the Holy Spirit will carry our voices together with our prayers into the heavens and that you will hear our prayers and grant comfort to those who are asking for your divine intervention in their lives, for them and for their families, and to grant them healing, to restore them to good health, and that you will cover them with your blessings and your divine presence and protection. We thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. And I will now read the names on the prayer list. Donnell, Linda, Sandra, Erica, Shemang, Dyke, Carlos in Canada, Janet Carroll and family, Tish and Luke Roskamps in the UK, Mary Ferris, Jeremy Mann, Julie Perkins, Rashawn Jefferson, Damon Jones, Scotty Williams, Barbara Cleary in the UK, Linda Hawley, Sylvia, Greg Evenson and family, Arthur Marsalis, Veronica Lewis, Tanya Thompson, Kathy Petrick, Mark, Francine Mancari, Tamala Lewis and family, Michelle, Joe in the UK, Carol in Iowa, Edie in Missouri, Alberta, Willen Konacek, Sandra Moen, Susan, Russ Dizdar and family, Donna Leal and Nathan Leal, Kathleen, in Boston, Frankie and Melissa, and Destiny in Boston, Tracy Whiting, Clint and Cliff in Kansas, Phyllis in Kansas, Jennifer in the UK, Linda Jean, Sherry Gudgeon, Sabrina Sutton, Tracy Thacker, Melanie Monteith, Edie Neal, Sybil Wynnum, Manfred Pauli in Venezuela, Donna and, and her son Andrew, Mubeen in Cape Town, South Africa, Rona, Noor, Rami, Ferris, Muhammad, Jilhan, Travis and Ellen Thacker, John, Tommy, Dennis Walker, Faye, Maria in South Africa, Jennifer, Charlotte Matrisic, Maria in Nevada, Louise in Alabama, Patty in Alabama, Sybil Wyndham, Gloria, Contessa, Mrs. Disney, Ladios, Dr. Paul Hegstrom, Lorraine, Irene, Lydia, Mike Newcomb, Beverly Raza, Jason in Florida, Charlene Kelly, Daniel and Faniel in Toronto, Frankie, Robert, Stacy, Judy, Sarah, Sherry, Ron and Marge, Tim and Michelle, Constance Wadlington, Toretta, Glenda from Kansas, Larry Nichols, Melanie, Floyd, Amy and Eric Olson, Trudy, Gladys, Gerald Taylor, Diamond, Gregory, Irma, Travis John, Ertis, Demarcus, Anne, Richard Bresen, Helen, Pearl, Irma, Grace, Rebecca, Linda and Joe in the UK, Dan and Jason Junker, Dion, Joshua and Johnny, Kalila, Aralee, the Marsh family, Julie Mullins, the Grant Anderson family, Chad Cowan, Randy Guerra, Barry Wolcott, Tina, CJ, Ray, Mackenzie, Deborah, Sally, Joe and her family, Gina, Mary in Alaska, Veronica Thomas, Karen, Michael Freeman, Megan, Trudy, Jeremiah Mask, Gwenadi in Russia, 
Jeff Olson, Kelly in Texas, Jennifer in Kansas, Geneva Norris, Latasha Coleman, Seth Thomas, Jim Thomas and family, Tanisha Washington, Cindy, Guillermo, Eula Cooper, Robert Alexander, Leo Torres, Chris Elias, Jeff London, Jared and John Chambers, Eddie Tiny, Leslie Cavazos, Ryan Cadillo, Aaron Marsh, Jimmy in the UK, Valerie and Hillary Perry, Blanche Collins, Flick Mays, Michael Kuhlman, the Pope family, the Baldonado family, Mary Jo and Fargo, Daniel Duran, Dr. Marty Sanders, the Hargrave crew, Lena Davis family, Sharon in London, Billy Medlock, Lola Striggles, Rondella Canita, Dave McCartney and family, Nicole, Shea Standifer and family, Billy Coleman, Rita Nixon, James Grace, Alton Johnson, the Johnson family, Tracy and Alice Daniels, the Elias family, Arlen, Kathy and Al Matthews, Deborah Yars de Lorenzo, Chadrick Watson, Kevin Giles, Eric, the Collins family, the Johnson family, Trevia Powell Clark and family, Ray LaBelle, Tony Delcy, Edward McFarland, Seth, Malaya Marnie Horton Fisher, Abe Martinez, Roscoe, Hattie Battle, Alberta and Chuck, Isabel, Enoch Bryant, Sister Wanda Burke, Anthony Canita, Trinity Johnson, Curtis Warren, Sandra Trotter, Rhonda Pryor, Wanda Burke, James Washington, Enoch Bryant's family, Aretha McKinney, Lee Pittman, Blessed Hartabin, Andrew Giles, Penny, Bonnie, Loretta, Ray Charles, Wayne Jones Jr., Kadisha Cooper, Becky and family, Ashia and Kanisha Morrison, Jeff Olson family, the Sybil Morrison family, Trelina Hope, the Gafford family, Emily Aguilar, Shaladra Kelly, Ann Downs, Erwin Gudgeon, Latosha Coleman, Jackie Clark, Don Orth, Jason Kirkby, Denise Duby, Miss Stapleton, Mo- the Mooney family. And Father, these following are the names of the children who perished in a recent fire in Chicago apartment. Adrian Hernandez, age 14. Ariel Garcia, age 5. Xavier Contreras, age 11. Nathan Contreras, age 11. Cesar Contreras, age 14. Maya Almarez, age 3 months. Moni Aiea, age 3. Grelani Aiea, age 5. Giovanni Aiea, age 10. And Victor Mendoza, age 16. Ricky, La Rosa, Paula, Netta, the Flores family, Rose Cummins, Val Hayward, the May family, Zafonso Davis, Michelle, Mac, Taylor, Ray, Alan, Willie Alton, Asila Friedman, Johnny Blair Jr., Alicia, the Berguano family, Stamford, Kashari Warren, Christopher Anders, May Thomas, Kali Parson, Lisa Abbey, Joe Moore Sr., Joshua Judkin, Rachel Dillon, Wanda, Gordon Biffle, Demarion Coleman, Mary Cox, Beth, Megan, Zachary, Stephanie Giles, Tevin Giles, Arlene Matthews family, the Crawford family, Veronica Enriquez, Dante, Marche, Emerson, Pryor, Leon, Nikki, Roy Collins, Steve Lafever, the Moody family, the Sanders family, Hezekiah, Metty Lisa Egahagan, the Jamie Kloss family, Shaney. And I will leave you with this. Lord, 
help me to remember that nothing is going to happen to me today that you and I can't handle. Amen. And guys, it has just been Amen. wonderful visiting with you today on this really cold, dreary, kind of miserable Tuesday morning, but you've all warmed it up, bringing your love and your compassion and your mm-hmm. understanding to the table, to this big old round table we all sit around. Isn't it great? But it's time to push the chairs back because we've got to go. I've got to send you back out in the world now. I don't want to, but it's time. But not before I let you go and tell you, remind you, that you're in my thoughts and prayers every single day. And I love each and every one of you very much. I love you all, too. And that will never change. Remember that. So, as we say goodbye for now, be safe out there. The weather's awful. You are, too. Yep. And okay. I'll see you next God week. Bless right back okay. here on Heart Talk. Take care, Bye-bye. you guys. Bye for now. You too. Okay. Blessings to all and bye for now. Bye. 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 Bye.